I said to myself that I won't be talking about the nerfs in Warframe after my Archetitron video, but it seems like both the slam capacitor changes and Dante nerf were just tip of the iceberg. However, the main purpose of this video is to keep you informed about builds that I have shared in this video that are now outdated because of the recent changes that Digital Extremes made. In terms of Dante, my build is still the same, and just like I have said in the previous slam capacitor video, Dante is still a solid Warframe because his overguard can still be effective in both solo and team composition. Not to mention that Page Flight hasn't lost its vulnerability debuff and aggression suppression feature and these makes the Warframe good in survivability and deadly with his Exalted Grimoire. Speaking of the Exalted Grimoire, it seems like Red Crit Noctua will be staying with the help of the Incarnate Ceramic Dagger initial combo plus the secondary outburst and Orange Tau Forged Archon Shard Synergy. Its Energy Drain is manageable with Arcane Energize and a few efficiency mods and you can obliterate even deep Archimedia enemies unless you are fighting the fragmented boss. Lastly, his duration and range stayed and Digital Extremes did a couple of tweaks on their line of sight mechanic for both Dark Verse and tragedy skills. Overall, Dante is not meant to hold all the power in the world of Warframe, but at least only the nuking part was removed, and not the DPS, survivability, and support features of the Warframe. And some may disagree with me, but I'll be holding my ground and say that Dante is fixed now, and I still consider him as one of the best Warframe that I will surely be invested in doing builds and increasing his power level in the future. On the other hand, may the slam capacitor buff of Archetitron rest in pieces. The hammer is dead because of what Digital Extremes have done to its slam capacitor buff, I'll be brutally honest here, and I feel Feel like they suck all the fun that this hammer can offer. The main reason why players enjoy the Archetitron is that it's rewarding when you have the full stack of the slam capacitor. The damage is satisfying after you have done your chore of building 10 stacks of the buff without doing any slam and just relying on normal fast attacks and finisher for kills. Honestly, I could digest the changes if Digital Extremes decreased the slam capacitor buff to half, as I think 5 times slam capacitor would be enough change to balance the hammer while making it a popular choice of the community. But I guess the developer has other plans and right now it's a waste of resources even trying to put synergies on the hammer like damage buffs or red crit setup because you won't get the same satisfying feeling of getting millions of damage. Another thing that I would like to discuss here is the current situation of Eclipse as a Helminth or subsumable ability. The Lunar buff that grants 75% damage reduction to both shield and health is now more reliable compared to the Solar Eclipse buff. This is just my experience and from the people I've talked with regarding the changes but we feel like the Solar Eclipse damage buff is also dead now and Mirage ability is more appealing to players who like their Warframe to be tougher. The health and shield tanking setup will be more fun to to play with Mirage 75% damage reduction compared to the Solar Eclipse that feels like you are just squishing the final juices of a weapon to make it good. The Helminth version of the ability is like Rhino's Roar right now that you can't even get to 100% weapon buff with a 300% power strength build. In fact, Roar is better since it serves its purpose of increasing damage over time combos such as bleed, gas and toxin setups, and it also does provide increased damage to Warframe abilities. On the other hand, you are better with defense stripping abilities from the Helminth if you are planning to increase your weapon's raw damage. Overall, the 75% damage damage reduction is more appealing for me right now compared to the measly weapon buff that its solar eclipse can give. Another subsume ability that I would like to discuss here is the Helminth version of Nourish. This is still a top tier subsume ability as it grants fantastic energy multiplier that increases your energy recovery. Nourish Dynax is still healthy and still one of the best Helminth combos in my opinion. However, other setup that don't have energy recovery options like Dynax Rally Point will somehow struggle to span their abilities right now. It would take at least good kill speed also to drop energy orbs from enemies or pair Nourish with Xenurix Wellspring and even add Arcane Energize to get that overkill energy restoration from Nourish again. The energy multiplier decrease did not hurt the ability at all, and it remains a great helmet ability as it also provides guaranteed viral procs to your gun. Most of my multiple status combo builds with Nourish are still alive, and the viral status that the ability grants weapons just allows me to shred enemies fast with some of my weapon master builds. The energy multiplier decrease did not hurt the ability at all, and it remains a great helmet ability as it also provides guaranteed viral procs to your gun. Most of my multiple status combo builds with Nourish are still alive, and the viral status that the ability grants weapons just allows me to shred enemies fast with some of my weapon master builds. Now, Digital Extremes said that they will closely monitor the changes that they will be making on the helmet abilities, and there's a chance that they would tweak it again. If they're going to tweak the damage buff of Mirage, then it would be good. However, if Nourish will get changed again, then I think it will definitely murder the helmet version of the ability. I really think that Digital Extremes should just accept the fact that they created something powerful and there's no possible way of balancing it, unless they remove it from the helmet system. It was their choice to include both Eclipse and Nourish the Helminth, and they are now punishing the players for enjoying the abilities with their other Warframes. They have the chance to make Nourish an exclusive ability for Grendel after his rework, but they did not replace it at all. So this means that they want their player base to enjoy the ability and these simple tweaks are good enough in my opinion. If they decided to go another round of changes for the Helminth version of Nourish, then this will cause a huge uproar again from those players who have invested so much to perfect their Warframe builds while adding Nourish in their setup. Moving on, I would like to talk about Nisha's new augment which I dubbed as a funny April Fool joke made by the developers. 
before the update, I already talked about the augment potentially making Nisha a good status primer and nuking Warframe. I also mentioned about how good the augment will be since his fourth ability has a wide range, able to cover almost a room full of enemies. Basically, the ability will be a potential trash mob nuker, and at launch, it was even better. Because during its release, the developer messed up some codes and the nuking feature of the augment went crazy. It was one of those setup where you use it while you can, since it's definitely getting nerfed because of its insane nuking power. The augment was insane because with max overextended and stretch, you have 44 meters of range, which can pin a room full of enemies. After that, all you needed to do is use any hybrid weapon that deals huge status damage to one impaled target, and you will see a huge explosion, killing the rest of impaled enemies. That was instantly changed by digital extremes, but the range is still there, and this leads to the current state of the augment that adds a 50% range penalty to Nesh's Divine Spear when you have it in your build. Honestly, I think that the nerf was warranted, and I don't have any problems with it at all. As with overextended and stretch, you still have 22 meters of clearing potential with Nisha. Remember that Divine Spears has no line of sight, and it can hit enemies within 44 meters. So basically everything except Eximus units will get impaled, so removing the insane nuking part would not be enough in my opinion, as you will still have a way to pin targets in place and kill them without moving from your spot. The Divine Retribution Nisha is still fun to play with right now, and it offers good clearing speed while also using his other abilities on the move. Not to mention that we also have grouping setups such as the Nautilus Cordon mod that pull enemies within 30 meters. You can still use this along with the Divine Retribution setup, and honestly the Warframe is still fun to play with despite the augment nerf. What did not sit well though is the fact that Digital Extremes released a broken augment, and people love it so much since it can compete with room cleaning Warframes such as Saren's Spore ability. And releasing the augment to be as broken as its initial state is like saying that it's just an April Fool's joke guys and Nisha won't be climbing that meta ladder with his new augment. And finally, I want to talk about some of the crowd control stuff I have shared before that is not working with Eximus units, or any enemies that has the overguard mechanic in Warframe. The biggest nerf to this are on my Breach Surge and Muzzle Flash setup. If you still remember, Breach Surge and Muzzle Flash are the top primary counters for enemies with overguard as they get blinded by the abilities. This is after Digital Extremes remove Banshee's silence interaction with overguard, and both abilities are the most reliable when it comes to dealing with Eximus units. Aside from that, there were also abilities that immobilize overguard units such as Mag's Fracturing Crash, and her counter pulse augment can also jam their guns and make them play rock, paper, scissor, waiting just to die by your hands. Frost can also slow this units with overguard, but after the recent hotfix, Digital Extremes remove these interactions, and the best way to deal with overguard units right now is to kill them as fast as possible. Basically, all those muzzle flash and breach surge survivability setup I have shared in the past are outdated now, so don't bother trying to follow the builds. The new update is really a roller coaster right now, as first we talk about how great the new Warframe is, and then we see angry mobs with their pitchfork pointing at Digital Extremes. Now, like I always suggest, I really think that before releasing any updates like this, the team should have a thorough discussion on the possible cause and effect of adding stuff in the game. It giving power to Warframe players and taking it away after a week, months, or even years of adding it in the game will only fuel bad impressions about Warframe. I completely understand that some of the things that were added should be toned down as they are definitely broken as it would somehow make an easy game like it was made to be played by toddlers. But I do hope that they'll consider doing some test servers if they are unsure on how a new feature will affect the game in general. When they release something that is considered by many as fun, then they take it away this build up frustrations and we have seen how unrelenting some of the Warframe players are when it comes to nerfing their favorite setup in the game. Just take, for example, the nuke meta and Wukong nerf, which has let a lot of Warframe players review bombing the Steam page of Warframe. My only advice to Digital Extremes is be very careful in what you are releasing, so don't ever rush content and take your time. Now, I would also like to know your thoughts about this recent nerfs happening on Warframe right now. Let us discuss in the comment section below. Before doing so, please help us please the YouTube algorithm by simply liking and sharing this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again in our next video. Squad Leader, signing off.